Welcome to you all. I'm Patrick Malloy. I'm the Dean of this cathedral. And on behalf of all of us who gather here day by day and week by week, and of all the Episcopalians in the Diocese of New York, we welcome you to our cathedral. In April, Ms. Didion's closest family and her closest friends came here and together we placed her earthly remains in the cathedral columbarium. Just as about as soon as we could after the pandemic allowed it. She left very clear directions about what she wanted to happen at that service. She wanted it to be very brief and she specified the texts that she wanted us to use, all from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer, which is what you would expect from an Episcopalian who wrote a book called A Book of Common Prayer. The texts that she chose were remarkably dour, actually. Uh, of all of the texts that one could choose from our prayer book for funeral, she chose some of the most heavy. What's interesting about the text that she chose, though, is that she did not want them to be from what actually is our Book of Common Prayer, the prayer book that we adopted in 1979, a prayer book with all of the these and thous and seths wrung out of it. She wanted the texts that she remembered from the 1928 Book of Common Prayer, where all of that Elizabethan language was still intact. Soon after Quintana died, an article appeared, an interview article in the, in the Los Angeles Times, and they asked Ms. Didion about her religious belief. And she said that she really wasn't religious. She didn't believe in a personal God, uh, but she did believe in a God that was like geology. You know it exists, and you know it has an impact on your life, but essentially it doesn't know you or really care much about you. And that's not a surprising thing for someone to say who had endured the things in her life she had endured. What's interesting, though, is nonetheless she wanted a funeral using the words that she remembered in her youth and that had seen her through her life. The thing about the words uh, in our liturgy, we Episcopalians, is that the, the meaning of the words, the literal meaning of the words, is important to us. But what's just as important to us, I think, is the rhythm of the words, the sounds of the words. And the meaning of the words is more than the meaning of the words for us. It's not merely a matter of individual words meaning individual things, but the pattern of words conveying truly things that are beyond our ken. And so I understood why she would want the words that she remembered. Not that the modern words meant anything different. They don't mean anything different. They're the, the same. But the rhythms do mean something different. And they carry with them a reality that the mere meaning of words cannot possibly convey. And so this evening, we will hear many words about Ms. Didion and about people's relationship with her that will convey more than the words themselves will convey. Words that in their rhythm and in their delivery will convey love and respect and all sorts of things that they could never convey if they were just words on a page. And so this is a, a holy and a solemn occasion. And we at the cathedral, all of us, are very grateful that you are with us tonight. And we are honored that you are here. And we are honored that you have entrusted us with the earthly remains of your beloved Joan Didion Dunn. <laughs> 